and then all the elements are in here. Right, and this is very different from the periodic table that we're taught. Right. So, um, you see, in this cycle here, right, you might have Cu here, which is going to be copper. Right. Right? And you might have gold Ag here. Right. So, what's the difference between the two? Is a harmonic shift. Right. You see? It's a frequency shift. Because silver may be right here. Right here. Zinc may be right here. Right. And uh, lead may be right here. But if you look at Walter Russell's chart, and you look at what it would take to move copper to gold, is a frequency shift back down to this level. Yeah. So if you can do something to this copper, right here, this substrate, if you can do something to it by seeding a material on top of it. Right. Right? And then you fire that in an oven, what happens is it's going to transmute at that level, whatever the whatever is in here, it's going to transmit it, transmute it to the to this material. Right. And so when you take this layer out and send that for assay, that's what was in the material. Okay. So see, right. maybe right. Walter Russell isn't so far off putting the chart together the way he did. Yeah. After all, he did say that there's the, the positive spin and the negative spin. Of what? He called one a male and one a female, if you read his book. Oh, right. You know, he called one plus and one minus. You mean the elements? He called those elements plus. Yeah, well, he talked about life, about these two frequency shifts. You know, I think he had a drawing, something like this. Yeah. So I had to check it out. <laughs> and uh, I had to try it for myself, and I was thoroughly convinced after being booted out of the hi-fi industry with this stuff. And, and, and we did do it. We were able to successfully prove that, that it was possible to build these room temperature semiconductors and use little bitty wires to transfer power, okay, without any signal loss whatsoever and no heating in the wire. And we were using 200 watt amplifiers, 300 watt amplifiers. And we also found out that it was possible to make a big substrate, say bigger than this disc here, about this size, that we could put the material in this stuff, which is like a plastic, and then we could take that stuff and put it between two copper plates like this, and we had a perfect capacitor, 3.9 microfarads. Well, going back to this one here, mm -hmm. what, what is this now? That's this material. That's, okay. See, that's Ms. Material. This has been sanded off so you can see. Oh, okay. You so see you, you just made it bigger physically. We made it bigger so you could see it. Right. So, so we could see it. Right. And then we would look at that material, and this, this material becomes something like a dielectric. It is a dielectric then. And then if you put it between these two plates, you get a capacitor. So we were able to, to build in a capacitance with the material into the crystal by, by putting these components, which were never seen or heard of, in the box. Because they were band sawed open and 
they didn't know what they were looking at because <laughs> they, they didn't know any such technology. Yeah, these but are. Is that one being bent so it open? No, this yeah. one was broken open to check these jacks and notice it's tuned it's tuned between the grounds with this little coil here can you see that right here yeah see and then this this ground connection was to the case like that and that's the ground of the substrate underneath here but in this block is this chip and a capacitor made from this material so therefore since you don't know the technology you can't even you can't comprehend it right because you can cut it day and night and try to figure out what it is but when it's not electrical the same way you know electrical you know you're you're scratching your head a long time in fact to this day they don't know yeah. and probably never will and never know how to do it exactly even though, you're showing the right even though I'm showing you yeah. and just back, back you have to know what you're looking for yeah yeah and that's one part that I can't give you, <laughs> right. you know, but I can talk about it. Right, right. So, and I can tell you that it's based because Sajeka was very persistent on what Walter Russell said on this chart of elements. Because many times he would say, John, and this is exactly how I'd say it. John, where's the copper? Well, it's right here. Okay, how many down is it? Three, two. You say, now go down there and find gold. And so I'd go down to the chart and I'd find gold, right? And he'd say, what do you need to do to get gold? Well, you have to transmute the copper. So it isn't lead, like they tell you. It's copper. And when you do, you do the same thing with silver. He would repeat that over and over and over and over. John, here's silver. So what do you need to do to get zinc? And you'd go down here and you'd look, and it's just a frequency shift between, between all these materials. And it's been in Walter Russell's books forever. Yeah. Forever. <clears throat> but see, when it, what I want to point out here is th this doesn't make anybody a magician. This, what this says right here is you, the person that's trying to do this, have a lack of understanding. And so therefore you can't comprehend it. You think it's BS. But this has been in front of the public forever. Yeah, you well, see, so things that we don't understand we burn it at the stake. It's gone forever. You don't ever want to hear about it again in your life. You got this big mental block about, oh, it can't be done. Oh, that doesn't work that way. My meter doesn't measure it. Well, I'll tell you what, your whole body's a big meter. John, back to that uh, Walter Russell thing with the two spirals, one's connected mm -hmm. with. That doesn't have anything to do with the spin of the earth, does it? No. Okay. It had to do with what Walter Russell was shown when he was in that coma. Because remember he was in that coma for a long time. And when he came out when he came back 